Rooters, the unsung hero in a modern age. Welcome back to the channel guys, hope you are well. So why do I say that routers are the unsung heroes? We may have a 10 all the way up to a gigabit line, but very seldom do we actually look. There are people that do, so kudos to you guys that actually do, but people that look at their router and establish whether their router is suitable to the environment of their house and are able to deliver the speeds that we are paying our ISPs for. So for that very reason, thanks to ASUS for sending me the RTAX56U. We're gonna be looking over all the components and we'll be looking over the specs, the features, the software, and we're gonna be analyzing that in conjunction with how Picking a router is so important when it comes to delivering a proper signal in your house. But as is always, let's look at this unit a little bit closer. because we generally don't look at our routers all that much. They normally just sit on top of a cupboard or inside a cupboard. Maybe they are on the wall where they actually should be. Generally, they actually should be the most central point in your house to be able to deliver the most signal, but we don't look at them. So let's look at this unit. This is the RTAX56U router by ASUS, which we will dive into the details, but let's look at the design. It's an atypical design. It's pretty standard of a router, plenty of breathing room, because routers, funny enough, do get hot. They are transmitting information constantly. As long as your house is on, pretty sure that your router's on, so it is taking information from the ISP, well, and vice versa. You're literally sending and receiving signal all the time. So this little guy has to work extremely hard, hence the breathing room that we see on the device. If you look at the back, we have got our typical internet line that goes through RJ45 and on and off switch, a power, and then you'll see in yellow, those are our extenders. So you'll be able to plug those with long cables into either a switch or directly into a laptop or TV and so on and so forth. Lastly, well, actually third lastly, we've got two USB slots. Now, a lot of people just look at the USB slots and don't realize what the benefits of having a USB slot. We have a USB 2 and we have a USB 3.1 on this device itself. And what you can do is you can connect a printer to that. You can connect a hard drive directly to this. Then we have a reset button and we have a WPS. And then on the front, we'll have all of our normal indicator lights from one to four, obviously, to show if those RJ45s are being connected, an internet light, the five gigahertz, the 2.4 gigahertz, and the power button. But that's pretty much it when it comes to the design. Okay, guys, tech specs. And I am sorry in advance if this does get a bit too technical but we need to understand routers and its importance. But we'll start off with something really simple. This is Wi-Fi 6. Why is Wi-Fi 6 important? Wi-Fi 6 is important because as we've gone from Wi-Fi 1 all the way through to 6, the transfer speeds on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz bandwidth have increased, meaning that we are able to transmit data faster on a Wi-Fi network than previously. Wi-Fi 6 is faster than 5. Further on that, because the technology has evolved on the 802.11 framework, we also have better signal transmission. So in a nutshell, Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6 on a wireless network means that we have faster transmission speeds. Okay, take 14,000 of trying not to be too technical. Let's talk about AX1800 dual band. Dual band means that this router is outputting two signals, a 2.4 and a 5. Now, combining those two, it has an effective bandwidth of being able to transmit basically 1,800, two gigs effectively of data at the same time. 
the 5 gigahertz portion does about 1200 and then the 2.4 basically does about 500 I think 576 if I remember correctly so across this that's what the AX means it means that that's how much data this router is able to transmit at any given time and you'll notice that your super high-end routers will say about AX 1100 which means that it can effectively do 11 gigs even though your speed will never be there it can do 11 gigs increasing its bandwidth. The next thing we see is also something we see on the box where it talks about a smart Wi-Fi 6. So as mentioned before, your router outputs two signals, 2.4 and 5. What smart does, and it's something that you enact on the software, generally you'll see if you walk into someone's house and you try connect to the Wi-Fi, sometimes you'll see there's a 2.4 and a 5. What smart does is it combines those two into one smart signal. So if you are not receiving the strongest signal, it will automatically choose the strongest signal for the device that you have connected. This router has a quad core processor that outputs 1.5 gigahertz and 512 megs of RAM. Now that sounds like a laptop about eight years ago. Why would a router need something like that? The answer you'll be able to put together throughout this review is because routers don't just take information to and fro anymore. Well, they do, but they do so much more than that. Next on tech specs is you'll see on the box as well, it'll say Wi-Fi system AI mesh. So mesh is a phenomenal solution which Asus is an actual leader when it comes to mesh systems. For our next section we're going to dive into the software aspect because generally how it works is your ISP will come to your house and they will connect your router, they'll put in a username and password and that's pretty much that and most of the time that's sufficient. However, where routers differ is in software and we're going to see just how much. Now, in order to save time, I have just set everything up so that it is basically just a shell so that we can see the software. And we see here our 2.4 gigahertz network and our five gigahertz network just being done as a test. Now, this is where we'll be able to see the system status or the status of the router itself. Secondly, we can go to AI mesh mode in which you can make it a node. So you can say that this is my living room, dining room, bedroom, office. This is obviously if you're setting it up as a node and then it does have optimization. Next, we have the ability to create guest networks. Next is AI protection in which we have network protection and parental controls. Now we can see that this is on. It is blocking malicious sites. It does have two-way IPS and it has infected device prevention and blocking. So there will be alert preferences that you can click on and you will be able to send yourself a email to actually send you notifications of what is happening on your network. Next, we have parental controls. Now in parental controls, you would enable it and it does give a brief explanation as to what it does. But simply for an example, if you do have a young one in the house, if they've got a tablet, a cell phone or a laptop, you would take the MAC address of that device. You would put it in there. You would tick the applicable block of what content you want to block. The second thing that you can do is you can also say which device you want to enable internet at a certain time. Next we have what is called adaptive QoS or quality of service. Now you can say that you want gaming, media streaming, web surfing, learn from home, work from home to be customized as your highest priority or we can go into a actual customization where this is done in scale and you'll say no gaming is my highest priority or video and audio is my highest, highest priority, file transferring and so on and then you would save that and apply. Next is web history which you can apply and this can show different sites that have been visited. Again this is more of a control mechanism. So once that is on and enabled you can see what time, which device and what the domain visited was. Next we have a traffic analyzer. This will tell you which device is using the most internet. So if you do feel that someone in the house is hogging all the internet, you'll be able to log on and actually see which MAC address is consuming the most traffic. And you'll also be able to limit that. But I didn't say that. 
Okay, second to last is USB applications, and I'm just going to go over the three most important ones, and that is AI Disk, Printer Server, and 3G 4G. AI Disk is the ability to be able to plug in a USB or a hard drive into the back of the router and be able to share those files across your entire network, so it makes it really handy when you're trying to share with multiple devices. Next is Network Printer Server, and this is through ASUS Easy Printer Sharing. You can plug a printer into the back of your router, and you then, as a central point in your house, can all print to the same printer. Next and last is 3G, 4G, which is a failover service. So if you have a dongle or a little pebble that you want to connect, you can connect that to the back of your router. So in the event that your main service is not working your fiber or your ADSL, then if that fails, you'll have automatic fall over with 3G, 4G, and that is set up with a network provider. Last but not least is AI Cloud 2.0, and it is a really cool feature that you can get on Android or through the Apple Store. Now, what this is, is so long as you have internet connection on your phone, and your ISP or your router is up and running, no matter where you are in the world, you are able to access the files that are connected to the USB. But further to that is you have what's called smart access. And that means that you can even wake up remotely a sleeping PC and be able to access files on that. Okay guys, time to wrap up and I'll try put all of the technical jargon in one simple conclusion. This router was fantastic except for two areas. First area, the signal strength wasn't that good. So I do live at the bottom of a estate which has very, very thick walls and roof and so on and so forth. That is something that I can forgive owing to the thick concrete walls and that's something that can be fixed by a mesh system or a node. The second thing and something that is slightly less forgivable is the smart Wi-Fi I think has some way to go because sitting next to the router or walking away from the router with smart wi-fi enabled my phone or laptop physically disconnected when it was trying to change me from the 2.4 to the 5 or from the 5 to the 4 I actually lost internet connection so any call that i was on on whatsapp or any zoom that i was on would actually disconnect for a couple of seconds so that is one thing that i do believe asus needs to fix which i think can be fixed on a firmware updates because it is more of a software driven issue so conclusion conclusion wrapping everything up this router retails for about 132 dollars or 1999 rand that is a fantastic price considering that you are getting a wi-fi 6 router Further to a Wi-Fi 6 router, you're getting a router that has AI mesh compatibility. You just have to obviously check that it is compatible. Thirdly, you're getting a completely adaptable system on the software side where you can prioritize traffic. ASUS spent a lot of time trying to improve their software to make sure that you are able to prioritize your internet traffic. So my recommendation is even if you're not going to be looking at this router, do not just take what your ISP, and don't get me wrong, ISPs do give good routers sometimes, but sometimes they'll just put it in the corner of your house or give you a really bad router and you've paid so much for a line and you are just happy to deal with it because you're happy to deal with it. Your internet experience can be so much better if you just take the time and realize how important the device that is delivering your internet is. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this review. Have a fantastic time wherever you are. Cheers and goodbye.